okay so far we have uh, discussed about few things like uh, uh, we have been uh, talking about uh, overdamp system we discussed fee vibration we discussed force vibrations now it's time to conceive the part where we discuss uh, this uh, uh, vibration measuring instrument today's topic we will conclude our discussion towards vibration measuring instrument now what specific we are looking forward to measure this is another key point which is uh, we need to decide and all these concepts we have discussed previously will will you know uh, take part in this discussion that what we are going to uh, major in the sense right so three things which we are basically interested in one is displacement second one is velocity and third part is acceleration right acceleration now for this part the discussion will be related to the relative motion right and uh, let's say this kind of uh, let's, let's take a bit more better example in this sense suppose this is the vibrating bo body over which we want to uh, make all these parameters gauge all these parameters right here is one mass m which is supposed to be a meter attached with a spring one damp box and here is one scale which gives you the exact reading here now uh, this particular thing has some vibration displacement uh, precisely and this particular has uh, this body has its own uh, displacement now essentially we are talking about the relative amplitude as we have discussed earlier which is omega by omega n square and uh, divided by root 1 minus omega by omega n square whole square plus 2 xi omega by omega n square since all damping and everything is involved the formula will go on like previously now we have to decide that where we are getting this precision measurement with respect to this frequency ratio this is all what we need and all what we want that this ratio of z by y must be equal to 1 this is what our you know expectation from a measuring instrument in general terms the ratio of omega by omega n if is greater than 3 we can claim an accuracy with our displacement measuring instrument so our requirement that each harmonic will be recorded separately and accurately now the result is that the output motion will be distorted if the motion of the body is not harmonic so to overcome this difficulty the damping of the system if this is zero and omega by omega n is greater than 1 so we can say that in this situation we are recording each and every harmonic separately right now so the resulting output in this situation i will i am also going to write it right first one if damping of system is zero and the second part is omega by omega n is greater than one which is essentially for safe side we decided omega by omega n is greater than three so in this situation the output signal will be true, rep true, true representation of input motion and distortion will be very less in this sense right now <clears throat> the next part we'll discuss about it is 
the velocity right so we don't make the concept too much heavier here we will always talk of you know we will continue our discussion from displacement to velocity there is no uh, different thing in that part diagram would remain same right now let us say uh, the relative motion jet could be measured by means of secondary strain sensing transducer right and if however we can have a velocity sensing secondary transducer of type of a magnet rigidly fixed to the seismic mass move in a coil fixed to the frame then the output signal is proportional to the relative velocity and this concept what we use here this relative velocity is equal to the input velocity of the vibrating system and again this particular thing again prevail for larger value of omega n as the instrument behaves like a velocity pickup instrument right the so same instrument uh, with which we were measuring uh, the displacement of a system now with the same instrument by involving some transducer in an appropriate manner we can make it as a gauge of uh, gauge of velocity measuring instrument right now the what the equation prevails here if we reduce it to zero damping situation as i discussed earlier then z by y is equal to omega by omega n square approximately right and here we could have that amplitude is equal to omega square y divided by omega n square right uh, okay now this now i am bringing our discussion towards the uh, acceleration measuring instrument this omega square y this part represent the magnitude of acceleration okay now so amplitude has been recorded as z and under these condition acceleration is proportional to the vibrating body's amplitude and as well as the omega n which is constant for a particular system the natural frequency of accelerometer should be right this point is worth noting the natural frequency of accelerometer is should be at least twice as high as the highest frequency that means we are suggesting that omega should be even more than twice of the natural frequency there is a possibility of some difficulty in the case of non harmonic periodic vibration where the harmonics of higher frequency may not be recorded accurately unless omega n is much higher than the highest frequency of the harmonics for this reason natural frequency of most of the good accelerometer is above 10000 i mean it is just a practical range uh, much above the range of frequency of mechanical vibration now these three concept if I, i i would like to summarize all of this you can see here that discussion have been gone down to this particular formula only right we didn't go out of track okay plus 2j this one right this is for our acceleration we introduce some transducer arrangement in that part so we can go for this as velocity pickup if we are you know using this natural frequency and this displacement etc etc we will move towards the acceleration measurement now the another question is for frequency measuring instrument now uh, in this particular part we will basically discuss a famous instrument which is known as fraham's reed tachometer 
right now this is nothing but I'll, I'll make a schematic of it in this way right now so uh, it consists of as you can see here number of reads right in the cantilever arrangement and the natural frequency of set of these reads is adjusted to give a definite series of known frequencies when this instrument is attached right here with a free body where frequency of vibration is to be measured the read whose natural frequency is nearest to the exciting vibration nearest to the exciting vibration now the uh, this cantilever arrangement when it has been attached right like right here so the natural frequency of this set of these reads is adjusted to give a definite series of movement when this instrument is attached to a body and uh, as i said that uh, near to the resonant condition precisely and this will start vibrating with a very higher amplitude since it has gone into the zone of uh, resonance the frequency of vibrating body is then given by the known frequency of reed vibrating with a maximum amplitude. The accuracy of this instrument depends upon the difference between the natural frequency of successive reeds. Now, so this particular part has to be, uh, you know, uh, adjusted very carefully, right? The smaller the difference, more accurate is the instrument and vice versa. Of course, uh, with a more accurate instrument of this type, the range of frequency that can be measured will be smaller. So this is what the Raham's read tachometer. Now I would like to end up this discussion here of vibration measuring instrument. Now we will have to deal with in upcoming lecture with the uh, with this uh, uh, gears vibration a little bit and uh, precisely the shaft vibration, which is essential part of this practice, right? and uh, then we are about to finish our uh, basic discussion related to this lecture and uh, i suggest a student to go carefully beyond this force vibration part because this is an essential concept that we have just discussed uh, i mean if you leave aside that uh, uh, vibration measuring instrument before that whatever be the discussion we had uh, are, are essentially very important so thank you very much